I'm from Plantan, right? So my dad pretty much brought us into this whole sport of Muay Thai when we were kids. And Muay Thai is big back in Plantan. So um, he taught us Muay Thai, he brought us to these little shows in Kampongs. Um, and yeah, it picked up from there. And when we finally got connection to watch proper YouTube, and we saw what's happening around the world in fighting. And eventually, MMA came into the picture. When my brother was born, my uncle from Singapore brought me a videotape of the first ever UFC and I didn't even know it was UFC back then. That was 1993. But there was never really a presence of MMA in Malaysia. Melvin, when I looked up the internet for any MMA training center, I only can find one at that point. That was around 07 or 06. And it was all the way in JB. And little did I know that he's now my partner for Ultimate Beatdown. Melvin Yo is a pretty humble guy. Everyone in Malaysia pretty much knows that he is the pioneer of MMA, although he doesn't like admitting to it. I become a teacher because both of the reasons like uh, I like to be in the school and then I like the school life. The most important thing. Plus one more thing is school life is, is half day so I can work on my uh, journey. Not all because I'm still new in this school but my my last school which I'm teaching six years there, they all most of them know. Plus I'm I am teaching PE also, so it's nothing special. When I'm still younger, right, like, like seven years ago, when they know I, I'm doing this type of sport, uh, they think it's a violent. Maybe now I'm getting a little bit old, so 
so look more mature, so they don't think it's a violent spot or what. This is another all Malaysian contest. Yeah. Raymond Chu, yeah, just missed by about three inches only with that front kick. Nice belly to belly suplex. Dramatic takedown. You don't see as many saltos and suplexes and things like that in MMA anymore. Let's see if Ray can work some top game. What I like is right away, Melvin, you can tell, has a much better guard than we've seen. He's got his right foot on the hip there, keeping a little bit of space. Melvin, you have harder to do that as the sweat becomes a bigger factor. But so far, it looks like Melvin's got a pretty solid guard. Definitely dangerous. Raymond Chu just missed with what looked like a very strong right. Going to the tie plum now. Nice double! Oh. and kicks up with their hands. Sure. Uh, this, uh oh, this could be a triangle choke. Uh, it's, a, it's not deep enough yet. He's going to have to take Raymond's head and pull it down. It's over the shoulder a little bit. Raymond needs the posture. Oh, that was deep. It's finished. And we have a challenger for the national featherweight title, Melvin Yo. Winner. By way of submission, via triangle choke from the red corner, Melvin Yo! First national title, and I'm looking forward to seeing Melvin Yo in action again. A very, very busy fighter, full of energy, 31 years old, improves his record now to 7 and 1. But eventually I spoke to Melvin because I was trying to sell the shots for my friend online. And he was the one who came in and bought a lot of it. So we started talking about this and I realized that he was doing this thing called Ultimate Fight Nights where he could get guys from other gyms to come spar with guys from his gym. And I was like, hey, maybe we can do something fun with this. Um, some cultist underground event for MMA. Put an online stream so that people around the world, or if you know, we can start off with Malaysia, put out the news that we are going to do a show, it's going to be streamed live, you can watch it for free. And yeah, so November 2011, I think, we started our first show, Ultimate Beatdown 5. Uh, years, which I didn't know. We shot a pilot TV show in uh, KL called uh, Living the MMA Dream. It was going to be sort of like the ultimate fighter. And I was the head coach for that. Melvin was a contestant. I didn't know anything about him. And of course, his skill level is quite a bit higher than mine, but I was coaching him on the TV show. And so that was pretty funny. And one of the funny things was he on the TV show, he had a fight. They, they, they had a fight one time grappling, one time, you know, Muay Thai. And uh, after the Muay Thai fight, I said to Melvin, said, well, you know, Melvin, you know, your skill seems to be okay, but it doesn't really look like proper Muay Thai. And, you know, it's, of course, ridiculous that Melvin's had 50, 50 or 60, you know, Muay Thai fights. But it was so, but he's such a nice guy that he's, oh, thank you. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> so today I'm at the Ultimate MMA Academy. And I have with me the greatest Jollyan in the universe. This is Chen Yang, Melvin. Melvin. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you very much. And uh, I've been living here on the floor in the academy for over two months now, training twice a day. And this man has pushed me so far, and my, my total gain has increased by like 10,000%. I just can't believe what he's done to me. And look at my body. 
Look at this. 45 years old. 45 years old. Oh yeah. So here in Johor Bahru, there's a real social problem because a lot of the parents, they work in Singapore. So a lot of the kids are being raised by grandparents and things like that. And they get a lot of pocket money. And then... Yeah. And then they start to spend, uh, spend their money everywhere. They go to the cyber cafe. They're loitering around the street. And some of them, they feel boring. They make problem for the society. They have great many social problems. So you bring them in here, teach them how to fight? Yeah, yeah. You teach them how to fight, you give them, how, you give them the fight, so at least they won't fight outside or in the bar. Yeah, I told him I watched some of his boys fighting in this ring. I said, thank God this ring is here because they'd be outside in the street fighting like that. I say, thank you so much. School teacher at day, a fighter trainer at night, and how he changed lives. I mean, that's the amazing part about Melvin. He just picked up, like, kids off the streets, rascals and turn them into normal people and that is done via mixed martial arts it's just amazing what he has done kids who were like troubled kids they turn out to be security guards chefs cooks construction workers pilots you know even custom officers usually those teenagers what i get is uh, from school or bring bring here by by their friend you know they, so they start then they say hey I don't have much money, but I like to train, and then, and then I like to fight. So, as a passion, uh, people to this sport, or the people who love this sport, right? I'm more concerned about building, uh, building fighter, and then change, change people with martial art more than uh, make big profit, you know. Which is move most of the kids in this gym, uh, uh, teenager, they train for free. Out of this, you have one of his brightest students, Zeus, who became one of the most well-known MMA fighter when he was only, what, 15 or 16? So the thing is like that, this failure, I go to Jasko, I go to Jasko, this failure, try to grip me from behind, then try to rock me. So I disable him, take away his knife, then he asked me where I learned this, then I bring him here. He came here uh, 2011, I think around July, something like that. He has been here for two years already. His enemy record is uh, six one. I think the second best uh, in Malaysia is him. So this is a black color for me. I stand in there like that. And then this kid goes up to me like that. Pushing in. Okay, it's not like this. You, you don't know this. You just put like that. Okay? Go like that. Okay, so I, so I say, okay. Uh, so I pick up my wallet here, this side. So you focus here. I pay it and quit here. Like, Step away like that, okay. Just like that. And you are not as strong as that. <laughs> too fast, like it took just maybe three seconds. Something go very fast and just one, two, three and he moved back. Become I become like I've been dropped. <laughs> yeah. But the thing first thing I want to learn because I like to learn a lot of things. But the if I keep doing the raw things is I think it's not good man because every time if I rock 10 and maybe all of them are like this then I'm gonna die I go to the police every day police station every day yeah that's that's the thing I want to learn this and I'm gonna change my life I'm gonna change myself我就一直知道到这里啦然后我就是一定遵照海妖我们练的东西因为知道如果真的要练强要做最强的一定要follow这个drill来做才可以做最强嘛所以我在平时一直跟着他这样子一直遵从他的那个drill这样子去做然后我
就是有那个成就感。Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, he basically tried to break into my house, but uh, I decided to break something of his. So yeah, I first heard about Ultimate Beatdown quite a long time ago actually. I was doing my research before fighting Antonio Grosseffo and I heard about this uh, local show in Johor called the Ultimate Beatdown. It was organized by Melvin. I'm just a guy that's here to fight. I'm just a guy that's here to smash people. And because I just come from a little humble beginning, I just come here to fight. I'm not here to garner any fame. I'm not here to to entertain people. I'm just here to fight. And I hope that my actions in the fighting ring will make people happy. So yeah, violence makes people happy. When I was a kid, I got bullied a lot, but I don't carry that kind of emotion with me into a fight. But what? people did to me, I'm actually quite grateful because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, I don't carry any grudges, I don't hate, I'm very realistic. What drives me to fighting is the most, is the most primal form of expression. This is school, you have to control a lot of... You have, you have control the temple a lot because last time, last time like, when I was still young, right? I think three years before like that. Almost every year, uh, I, I can have one case parent uh, come to school to find me. Because I beat their, their, I beat their son or what. Uh. But most of them uh, are, are the problem students until their father cover them, uh, father or mother cover them. I got one case uh, long ago, uh, I think 2006 or 2005, uh, okay? Got one something female student go inside my class and then slap the other female student. Then I asked her to go out. Uh. She don't want to go, you know. Then uh, I have to like, uh, like half push her, go up the grass. Uh. Then she pushed me back, you know, like that, you know. And then I go to make the complaint to the school, right? And then the school want to set her. Uh. But ne the next day, the father come, act gangster or what. Although the whole class saw the girl push me, right? But then uh, the father said, oh, if you don't score her or what, uh, how come the girl will uh, push you or something? I would ask you, you be Jack, uh, we separate our job lah, like different department. Like I'm more on technical and then I'm more on uh, arrange fighter, fight card, who fight with who. Jack is more on PR and then uh, running the event, uh, and then contact with the sponsors, doing all the PR job, designing. Even the UB uh, logo and the poster is designed by Jack and then the t-shirt also. Can you provide water? Um, Joyce will handle that. Buckets? Buckets. Can you had it? We don't have any buckets. No. Are they providing buckets this time? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. But well, I was proposing that kind of like, you know, Japanese shower stool. Yeah, I know. But it will look cheap in a way. Hmm. So it's better to have them squat or whatever. Our cage are too low for any other kind of stools anyway. Yeah. We're not providing towels. We need to get towels for the blood and everything else. Alright, done, 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 mm -hmm. done. Okay. Just, um, you don't have a walkie, just leave your WhatsApp on. Thank you. 
十幾歲開始學咗，咁樣到我哋永春啦，你學過好多，揾過好多門派嘅，但係學唔耐。但係當你學到永春咧，就覺得永春依行功夫就係冇咁辛苦嘅，係好簡單嘅。咁樣就一路學，跟時直到長大咯，十幾歲咯，到廿幾歲出嚟做社會做工咯，咁樣就一排停停頓咗。當而家我哋教翻呢、這個呢、這個 WS Muay Thai， 跟住我哋開始就專注呢個運動，因為而家運動嘅熱潮係真係非常之好嘅。而家就喺 MMA 係最近呢四年喺亞洲就比較熱潮，佢而家推動到呢個開放運動就係最好咯。我、哦、其實我準備咗㗎啦，通常好多人講上擂台會驚啊。咁我哋唔會嘅，我唔會，我只係享受呢個權在嘅My family is a not so uh, not so rich normal family. My mother is a tailor, and then my father worked in the police plantation as a normal accountant. Uh. Every day, uh, cycling, go to take the bus, and then go to work, just like that. I always get get the luck, you know. So I, I am the uh, one of the two person, uh, who can get inside the government university, which is UTM. But my sister is not so good. Uh, but then my my family use all the saving money to uh, let her go to study in the. Uh, Study in Russia and then finally she become doctor lah. But then she also get ah、uh, scholarship also. My brother and me ah、uh, totally different character. Okay, ah、uh, like like you see, I'm still a reasonable person and then I still can talk soft or what. But he is totally different from me. He is like ah、uh, very violent and then some people say he's rude or something like that. Ah、uh, then since young. He never listen to my parents, and then he never follow the rules, and then he seldom stay in the house. Also, he stop, he stop studying, and then he start to、uh, find some、uh, find some job lah, just like、uh, do some construction work, and then go travel here and there, and then find、uh, and then go to Thailand, go to Hat Jai there, work there, and then live there. I and then I also. Don't even know、uh, what he is up to because that time I am busy studying in university for、uh, four years. I left my family at seventeen、uh, and then come to JB to studying in UTM that time. Now what happened to him? Now, now what happened to him? The last I heard is he go to Thailand and then he go to travel the other place and then go to America and then he he have travel to Brazil also and then. Uh, because last time we still don't have Facebook and anything, so you only can by email or by phone. So none of us get to it.、Uh, know what he, what he is up to. I don't know where he is, and then I I don't think I really care. Also, do you miss him? More or less.
the last time we do our conditioning there, I bring my boys all go to the hills there to run, to jogging, to sprint, and then to do the frog jump, everything. We do our conditioning there. We do our technique and skill just in front of my house, small compound. You can see which is that side there. We use the whole road because that road there not so much car pass by, you know. So we can use the whole road like like we use the road to run and then sprint and then we just use the compound because that time my students not many just around 6 to 12 I uh, ran the house here because last time my first posting school is less than 50 steps the time when we train right we don't even have mats at all you know we just take the newspaper and then uh, we just torn all the boxes right then we put on the floor become mat still we cannot do throw but then it just prevent you from getting scratched huh? After two years, I have to open a gym and then to let all my boys have a place to train because you see the compound is quite small, you know. I take up all the saving, you know, that time, all the saving like 20k. Started the gym here 2006 until 2010. 2010, we moved to Taman Mao still already. It's not far, actually, it's just around 3km from here to Taman Mao still. I didn't come last year, so I didn't slept in the new gym, so he, he have much better life. <laughs> this is the place where me and my wife stay here almost like two years. Then we have our first son, uh, our first son also, my other son also staying in this gym, gym for two years. Yeah, even the stairs and even the board, everything is paid by me and my students. As you can see, even three years old. You can see most of the boys they willing to direct Russ to come to help for the UB like set up, set up the cage and set up everything. After their work, you know, many of them work in the construction, work as a labor in the daytime. 
So after they fit, finish the first six of squad, they direct rush to the place to help sell out the cage and everything until 3 or 4 a.m. You know. They didn't even expect me to pay them. You know. So even sometimes I feel like very pious and very touching. They really to sacrifice that much. You know. It's more than words can express. your own account why do you process your own account yeah Wow. The cage is this shit small though. <laughs> yeah, that's small. No, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, but I don't like, I don't like, like stepping left ways and like, eh, under the wall. Oh, he's like, this is a pride, bro. Bergaduh lagi. Ayo, bila saya mau datang sini tak bergaduh lagi. Aku kena datang sini bercuti. Hey, you play your role number, you go there and just keep playing this number. Let's talk about the UV11. UV11, actually, we a lot of people try to sabotage also, you know. Let's give an example. Uh, because in our UV, right, we have some fighter also fighting in other events also, okay? And then, somebody in charge of the event just call those fighter who fight the UV and then still in that event, ask them, you guys want to be famous or you still want to keep fighting the pub or bar? Become a small timer. Even uh, they, they call my boy, you know, my own boy, you know, to say, to ask them this, you know. Luckily, my boy lawyer to me, uh, my boy show me the message and then come to tell me about that, you know. You're not supposed to do like this, you know. Someone, uh, I'm not rival with, uh, to them, you know. I someone help them to find participant. I help them anything they want, like technical, anything, advice, anything. But then end up, this is how they repay me. Okay, 
When you do this right, make sure the head is as low as you can so his head cannot go back. I lose the nature there. Aha, this is not good for me. So I make sure my forehead touch the floor. Okay, go back my hand. Cannot. Okay. Okay, ready, hang up. Put your hand up, jump. Okay, she goes down. I start training in Taekwondo at years of uh, 13. That time, uh, even my mother not not agree, but then I truly truly go train. And then after that, at age of 14, then I start, start to train some Muay Thai. And then I have my first fight on uh, after three months of, of the training. And then uh, from 14 years old to 17 years old, I fought a couple fight. Uh, in my hometown area and then a uh, few fight in Hajai also and, and then after that I stopped fighting and then stopped training for for four years uh, the time I in university after I graduate I started posting as a school teacher so I started to train myself back I starting I mean uh, after I pick up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at years of, of 2004 I I starting to put MMA inside my my uh, fighting game, which is a mix with uh, the Muay Thai I have learned before and the Taekwondo I have learned before. And then the time, that time in Malaysia, all the people still don't know why is a why is MMA. They they only know why is the 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 E. Every time I show them uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skill, right? Then they say, oh, this is wrestling, uh. Or some of them say, oh, uh, why two big men have to hug each other? Why don't why two of them have to fight and then go to the ground and hug on each other? They said do this for you, right? This arm can right? Okay, then you put your hand like this. So here the phone, here the phone. You put your this here the phone, okay, put your hand like this so I can control you. See? Now you cannot get choked already, right? Okay, if you do this, shit, you can put your hand like this. Okay, don't take too much of you see already, right? Mm. Use your this, you see, your mm. forehand knife. Okay, slide inside the choke here, you see. Mm. Slide inside the choke here, and then uh, read your own bicep. You see, uh -huh. huh? Same my hand, right? Mm. Okay, my Let me tell you one thing, because the theory of the choke is that before you choke people, you have to learn how to choke people. Choke people is not about something red the neck there. It's about two pressure points. You put something here, then you put something here. Now we get choke already. Now we try to You see, it's always very different. I just put here. Chop. Yeah, it's going here. Now it's chop. It's always still not going to do this. It's not about many people thought, oh, it's a choke, ah, so I have to get like that, the whole hit like that. No, no need to like this. You put one point here. Okay, now turn it off. Uh, ah, still okay. Now put here. Stop. <laughs> this is one of the... Okay, let's say you get mount on him, right? He's exposing your knee, then you put your hand here. Okay, here, right? You put your hand here. Then, then you put another hand cross. Don't put here. Put under. Under, okay, under. Like this. Put your body on. about Ultimate Beatdown on the internet because I know they've had a few shows, uh, good shows uh, recently. So I kind of got interested in it and uh, here I am. My confidence, my level of confidence is not 100% but I'll try my best to be 100% this coming fight. Right? Yeah, this event is very big for us and really, this is really very good opportunity for us and definitely we'll try, try our best to win this match so we can make our future. I, I think it's a good event and also I think it's well organized and all the fights are actually put together very, very nicely. I am here to watch today's MMA. My very first time live MMA, the first time. I'm so excited. I can't wait.
because I have this uh, short film and a movie coming up, so I have been training martial arts, and then uh, I, I got interested. So that's how come I'm here. Ultimate Beatdown is really the place where Malaysian MMA began. Uh, Melville started this way back before uh, MMA was even popular here. And I'm glad it's still going on. I'm glad that it's my first chance to actually be on the card tonight. Both Ultimate Beatdown and UMA are part of the YFC network and we're very happy that they are part of us because they're helping to build MMA from a grassroots level and to build it up in a very positive way in Malaysia. Five nine grow bigger and bigger until five nine four and the five Jack start to run the event, change to ultimate beta five, six, seven, eight, then the nine one if we move to outside, we start to grow big. First five nine is around fifty people, and then five nine two, three, four people getting more and more. Until the ultimate beta we already have like near one hundred people.
唔係講要分高下，或者係我學咗幾多嘢，你學幾多嘢，上去大家要爭得高下呢？真真嗰陣係，我哋要嘅就係大家交流呢種技術，贏咗依難係好咯，啱唔啱？即係即係上去，第一我哋可以吸收到經驗係最重要。Spirit of the traditional Chinese martial artist, you know? he still call me after that. He say, "Hey, next event he want to fight again." This is the spirit every martial artist should have. Never give up. This is very good for our show because as a show we need showmen like this.
hopefully you'll be you know, grow bigger in the future. We might do in the hotel or we might do in the, the stadium in the, in the near future. Lah. But then I'm not planning to rush so fast because I plan to step by step because you will have some loyal fans now. So your ticket sales and the crowd already guaranteed. Describing you as a pioneer of Malaysian MMA is accurate? Uh, <laughs> this one skip can or not? Can. <laughs>